Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a tutorial or explanation of how I use Reaper as my DAW to create drum loops and use drum samples. Uh, everything I cover in this video is intended to be used for free at no cost. I'm going to be using uh, Reaper. So if you have Reaper, uh, that's really all you need. And then I've got a couple links below for everything else. So um, let's go ahead and get started. This is a pretty simple, straightforward way to create drum beats and um, again using samples. So first thing you need to do, open Reaper, create a new track, just double clicked over here, and click on this effects button. This is going to uh, allow you to see all the plugins that are available in Reaper. I've got a whole bunch because I've used a lot of plugins, but what I want you to do is go to this Cocos folder. Uh, Cocos is the company that makes Reaper, and this is their stock list of plugins. Anything that goes REA is a Reaper default plugin. You want to go here to this REA Sample-O-Matic 5000. It's a VSTi, and this is a sample loader. It's a really um, simple yet powerful plugin. Uh, again, comes default stock with Reaper and works great for this application. Now, at this point, you need to go and download some uh, samples. Drum samples are really any type of sample that you want to use. Uh, I will have links down below of samples that I have found and used that I feel like I could point you towards uh, without compromising anything. And um, you can go ahead and download those samples and use them uh, with this video. So um, once that is done, there's a lot of controls in here. And I'm not going to go super into depth or detail with these. First thing I do like to do, though, is turn the volume down because certain samples can be really loud. But you can do a lot of different things. Um, what I tend to do is to create an individual track with a simple instance of this for each of my uh, samples. So uh, with this one, I want to make it a kick. So I double click and I'm going to type in kick. Now I'm going to click browse. And I actually have this pack here. It's a Tristan sample pack. I'll have a link to it. Got kicks, hard kicks. I'm just going to choose number four. And um, so this is loaded. Now every time this track is triggered, this sample is going to play. So uh, that's in place. Again, you can mess with things like the attack and the release and the velocity and, and get some different results. But I'm not going to do that right now. That's a little more in-depth and detail and up for you to experiment with. So now you've got it loaded up. The question is how do we trigger or activate these samples? So there are really two main ways you can do it. The first is going to kind of be like a live performance. So to do that, you want to click this red button to arm it for recording. Go to this here where it says left. You want to right click and then go down here where it says MIDI, virtual MIDI keyboards, all channels. Now, if you have a dedicated MIDI controller, uh, this will work there. Um, I'm just going to be using my physical keyboard. This is not optimal, but it just for showing you how it works, this is kind of how it's done. If I click Alt-B, the virtual MIDI keyboard comes up. Now, I go over here and click Record Monitoring On. You see it says On, that's important. Now, every time I click this, or press the End button, or really any of these, uh, it will trigger the MIDI drum sample. I'm just going to turn the volume down a little bit because it's loud. Now, um, what you can do is if I just start recording, I can uh, tr click this and trigger it. So that really wasn't uh, meant to be super accurate in time. It's just using my mouse to click, and it's kind of weird. But if you have a MIDI controller, it would work much better, and it'd be kind of a cool way to get this done. And you can, you know, you've got your MIDI data right here that you created live, and it, it works really nicely if that's how you prefer to do it. Uh, another way that I want to show you is kind of how I like to do it. If I just get rid of this, and then I go up here to insert new MIDI item. It creates this little white thing. If I double click on that. Oh, this piano roll comes up, and you have this grid here, right? So all of these are different instances of MIDI, um, but in just on this track, it's just they're all triggering that one kick sample. So I can pick any one. I'm going to pick C3, and then you have your time selection here, right? So this is your beats, one, two, three, four, second measure, one, two, three, on and on, right? So if I want to do like just a simple kick one and three, it would sound like this. Very, very good. Um, now, let's say I want to add a snare. 
I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to duplicate tracks, rename it to snare. I'm going to go to my sample and I'm going to click browse. I'm going to pick a different sample. We're going to go to snares. I'm just going to choose that one. Doesn't really matter. And then double click here and I can actually move these to beats two and four. So that really is the, you know, the basics. And you can get pretty, com you know, if you want to get kind of crazy with things. You can add as much or as little as you want. It's, it's really up to your creativity as far as how you want to dial in this MIDI data. You know, and I can, I can go ahead and grab both these, copy and paste them. You know, now I've got a full minute 18 of drum loops. Now, uh, one of the advantages, you know, so I can keep going. I can make another track. I could do... Um, hi-hat, you know, same, and actually what I probably want to do is just duplicate again and name it to hat and then just pick a different sample. All right, so I, this one has hi-hat, so let's try number one. And I can go in here and I can um, go ahead and make my hi-hat or whatever you want to do, really. It's completely up to you. And then you have all of the cool things that Reaper can do. You know, I can go to my snare. I can go after this. I can add an EQ and, you know, really cut off the top. Um, I can use folders. So I create a new track. Click this button right here. Now everything underneath is going to be a part of this master track. So I can call this master, master drums. You know, I can change the volume. I could add plugins, you know, EQ or compression. Um, all sorts of different things I could do to shape the sound of my drum kit overall. Um, so again, a very simple yet effective way to uh, get a lot of cool things done in Reaper for free using very simple tools and plugins. But again, you know the the potential for for use with this kind of setup is really limitless. Um, and and again, you could not you don't have to. Use, I just use drum samples. You could do any kind of a sample uh, would be more than capable of being used with this kind of a setup. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like. And if you would subscribe, see more videos like this. I post pretty regularly uh, a lot of guitar or music production related content. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you again soon. Bye.